What's the crack everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Cards Everywhere here, bringing you another weekly league deck profile. So today I've got an espionage a cephalopod and a little bit of Innovation of War, which is part of the arena this week. Also using the Statue of Liberty. So it's a mid-range deck. Um, it's been doing relatively well for me. I wouldn't say it's super high tier, but it is something a little bit different to play this week if you are feeling a bit bored. So I'll give a quick rundown and we'll jump into a game. So first up is Statue of Liberty. On the play, if your deck has exactly 6 science cards, your science cards, wherever they are, gain 21 power until played, and then repeat for each album. Then we've got GPS. On the play, if you're winning the round, your cards in hand gain 10 power this turn. If you are losing the round, they gain 15 power, and if you are tied, they gain 20 power this turn. So ideally, you want to play this on the first turn of a round to get the maximum buff out of it. Next up, Internal Combustion Engine. On the draw, your cards in hand cost minus one this round. And on the play, if you are losing the round, your cards in hand gain 15 power this turn. Next up is Super Glue. On the play, your cards in hand gain 20 power this turn. Next, I've gone with Virtual Reality. On the play, your cards in hand gain 15 power this turn. And then on the return, your remaining cards in hand cost minus 2 energy next turn. And the last of these science cards is Jet Car. On the play, your cards adjacent to this gain 80 power this turn. And then on the return, you lose 40 power for 3 turns. Next up, I've gone with the Cephalopods. First is Flapjack Octopus. On the draw, your Cephalopod cards, wherever they are, gain 16 power and cost minus 1 energy until played. Next is Big Fin Reef Squid. On the play, if your deck has 4 or more Cephalopod cards, gain 2 energy permanently. Next we have Colossal Squid. On the draw, your epic and legendary cephalopod cards, wherever they are, gain 18 power permanently. Next is Caribbean Reef Octopus. On the draw, if your deck has 3 or more espionage cards, your oceans and seas cards, wherever they are, gain 30 power for 2 turns. Next we have Giant Pacific Octopus. On the return, this card costs minus 2 energy until played, and your Innovations of War and Machines of War cards, wherever they are, cost minus 2 energy until played. This is quite a good deck with some synergy for, or this is quite a good card with the synergy for this deck. And last of the oceans is Portuguese Man of War. On the return, steal 2 energy from your opponent. I just needed a low energy card to fill out the cephalopod cards. Next up is the espionage, first being the Enigma Machine. On the draw, your opponent's cards in hand lose 7 power this round, and this card gains 35 power this round. Then we have James Armstead. On the return, your opponent loses 2 energy this round. And if you won the turn, your opponent loses 10 power this round. Next we have the Cambridge 5. On the draw, if your deck contains exactly 5 espionage cards, your espionage cards, wherever they are, gain 25 power until played. And if it's round 5, they gain an additional 5 power until played. Then we have 5 eyes. On the play, 5 of your random espionage cards. Wherever they are, gain 25 power permanently. Last of the espionage is Fritz Gerbert du, du Quincy. On the return, your espionage cards, wherever they are, cost minus one energy until played. And if your deck has five or more espionage cards, your espionage cards, wherever they are, gain 10 power until played. 
And the last card I've gone with is Library of Alexandria. On the play, your history and science cards in hand gain 38 power this turn. And then on the return, this card loses 40 power until played. So that is the deck, guys. Something a little bit different for this week. I did have the Tremendous Trees in here instead of the Espionage for a little while. But it just wasn't working out quite as well. But as it is, this deck is fairly solid. It probably doesn't have the power to go late into the game. But it has a little bit of power to get the early wins. I still think there's room for improvement in the science cards at the very least. I'm still not sold on Jet Tower and the, the GPS. I might change them out. But for now, I'll run with this. Hopefully we get a real opponent so we can test out the deck properly. Unfortunately not. But if we win quick enough, I'll jump into another game so we can get a good idea of how the deck performs. So we go with five eyes, the Cambridge five, and the Caribbean Reef Octopus. So we are against a paleontology deck. I think we'll do fairly well against this. So we will line up our Oceans cards so we get the boost next time they come around. And we'll play Fritz. And we'll have to play the Enigma Machine next turn to get the maximum effect out of it. So we are doing fairly well here so far. So we go with the Enigma Machine, Giant Pacific Octopus... And I suppose James Armstead. I would have preferred to play him a bit later on. But I do want the super glue for next round. To get the maximum effect out of it as well. So there we have round one in the bag. So we got our internal combustion engine working for us. So we go with the super glue statue and library. So we pulled plenty far ahead already. And we'll use our internal combustion engine as well this turn. So I'll go with Colossal Squid, Internal Combustion, and the Big Fin Reef Squid. And we'll play the Virtual Reality next turn to get that around. So we go 5 Eyes, Cambridge 5, and the Virtual Reality for a 388. I think that'll be more than enough to stay ahead. So there we have it, two rounds already. It is against a bot, so there's no real challenge. So we'll try to get another game in here to get a good idea of how the deck performs. So go Caribbean, Flapjack and GPS. And then we go the Giant Pacific and the Jet Car Portuguese. And then whatever espionage cards we draw next turn will be enough to finish out the game. As you can see, energy is not a problem once we get the deck 
going around once. So I'm still on defence about the Portuguese Man of War as well. I might take that out and put in a stronger cephalopod card. So there we have it. Nice easy win for the first game. And I'll go for another one since that was nice and quick. Hopefully we get a real opponent for this one so we can get a good test of how the deck performs against a proper deck. So we'll just jump straight into another one. Unfortunately, the Fears and Flyers deck I was working on just doesn't have the power this week. So I'll leave it for another week, but I will keep it in the background. Um, also, the Occult deck I was working on didn't really work out either, but it did give me the inspiration for this deck. So I'm happy enough something came out of it. So here we go into the second game. I do believe this is a real player. So we say hello. So we go Colossal, Fritz and Portuguese for a 188 start. Not super strong. So we are playing against another Paleontology deck. This one focuses on the Ice Age cards. Was a strong deck a while back. So it'll probably do fairly well here. So I will go for Statue, Enigma and Caribbean for a 302. Unfortunately, the opponent won that turn. So he will get a plus five boost to all his, his Paleontology cards. Which is not great. So I think I'll go Five Eyes, the Jet Car, and the Virtual Reality, just to try and win this round. Since we have the Arena bonus next round, I think we'll be able to push through the minus 40 from the Jet Car. And we'll say thank you to the opponent. So there we go, round one done. So this round, I think I'll go with James, the Super Glue, and the Library. Yeah, I think so. For a 370 start. And we will also reduce the energy of the opponent for this round. So we might be able to get away with playing some weaker cards. There is our Flapjack Octopus giving us a nice little boost to our Cephalopods. So we're not too far ahead, but we have some relatively strong cards in hand. So I think we'll be safe enough. So go Colossal Squid, the Cambridge Five. And Fritz for a 381. The opponent is struggling on the energy. So we shall be able to win this round as well. There we have it. And then we have the arena bonus for our Innovations of War here. Unfortunately, we just played them, so they won't be coming around again for a little while. Um, we got the Enigma Machine and GPS for a 4.53. I would have liked to play a statue, but we'll be alright with this. We'll play a statue next turn. And the Giant Pacific Octopus makes a lot of the cards in our deck cheaper, so they'll be fine next time they come around. So I'm going to go Five Eyes, Jack Car, 
Um, I will go statue and Portuguese. And then next turn we shall be able to get the Big Finn and Jack Ish. As we will be stealing a little bit of energy from the opponent with Portuguese Man of War. So we will play the strongest hand we can. So that would be Jack Car and Super Glue, I think. 395. Yeah. So we'll go with this hand. And that was a good game indeed. So there is a decent showcase of the deck. It certainly has some power. It's definitely not top tier, but if you are stuck, it'll probably get you going a little bit higher in the ranks. So let me know what you think down in the comments, guys. And if you have any suggestions for improving the science portion of the deck, do let me know. But other than that, stay tuned for more videos later in the week. And I will catch you next time. Cards everywhere, out.